showrunner and master adapter, Lauren Schmidt Hiserick. of Sintra Siri, Freya Allen. Better hear it. Let her hear it. Let her hear it. Hey, baby girl. Hi, baby girl. Okay. She is the most magical mage in all the land, Anya Jalatra. And then from there, they're subjected to various alchemical trials. 
and they become mutants. Most of these children do not survive, and say one in ten would survive these trials. And then after that, they are trained in the art of monster hunting, and they travel the world hunting monsters for coin, and that is their one and sole purpose in the world, and they are often rejected by people because they're not supposed to have emotions, and that serves them very well in their monster hunting. But ultimately, just a group of badasses who kill monsters. <laughs> yes. yeah. So Lauren, what makes Henry your Geralt? Why did you say this is the guy to play this role? And can you talk a little bit about you guys' partnership? Because the show begins and ends with this character and your, your interaction with him as a showrunner. Um, absolutely. You know, I met Henry for the first time uh, before there was a script, before there was anything. Um, he was really annoying. And, uh, <laughs> yes, it really was. It's like I have an agent calling every day yeah. just to make sure <laughs> Uh, and finally I said, yes, fine, I will, I will take a meeting with you. We'll sit and we will talk about a show that is not yet greenlit and we have nothing. We have nothing. Um, so, uh, so we met, we had a lovely conversation about Geralt and I said, thank you. Now I have to go write the show. Um, and about four months later, uh, we had seen 207 different uh, options for Geralt. Wow. And yeah, wow. a lot. I mean, the casting process for all three of these uh, amazing, amazing characters. Amazing characters. All three. Was crazy. Um, but no, we, uh, I realized as I was writing, I continued to have Henry's voice in my head. Um, and that's kind of an undeniable sign that, that it was meant for him. I often has him have his voice in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Different and images. Different. Images. <laughs> and his voice. Sorry. Go on. Oh, sorry, Lord. <laughs> Not that way. <laughs> Not that way. Um, and then we met up in New York. And uh, Henry was kind enough to actually read for Geralt for the first time. And I got to hear the voices that were in my head actually come out of his mouth. And it was a done deal that day. Wow. Awesome. How was it like for you? Yes. That's an applause, huh? Yes. <laughs> sure. And what, is it, what was it like for you? Like, did you just feel in your heart? Because you were already playing the game, yes? yes so you were like, this is me. I, I am him. He is I. <laughs> I don't know. Some of that wasn't grammatically correct. But how did you feel about it? What made you say, I need to fight for this role? I. Uh, that's a good question because there's. I was very, very passionate about the games. I, I did play them a lot, and every time I played the games, I just thought, I really hope they made this into a movie or a TV show or something. And eventually, I heard, and it was, I don't use any cliche terms or anything, but it was something which I wasn't gonna let pass me by yes. without giving it my absolute best shot. And so, yeah, I, I annoyed the hell out of my agents. I called them every day and I said, you better be calling them, what's going on? Sort of, uh, why am I not in that room yet? And they kept on telling me the same things that Lauren told you, which was, uh, you know, they're not ready now, we've got a show running yet, let alone a, a, a script. And so when Lauren came on, then uh, I started pushing harder. <laughs> and uh, then we, I finally got the room with Lauren. And Lauren said, it's great to meet you, but um, we're not even ready to cast anything. <laughs> so you're just gonna have to wait. And I did, I waited four months, and um, thankfully the 206 other people. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, for whatever reason, I'm sure they're fantastic, but whatever reason, um, didn't have that thing, and, uh, which was right for Geralt. And it's an absolute honor for me to have the opportunity to bring this guy to the screen. It's uh, awesome. a guy who lives very close to my heart. I want to throw to a clip because I'm a very visual learner and I need to see things to understand fully, but I do understand that every time we see Geralt in this show, we're looking at you, that there's no stunts person for you, oh, wow. is that correct? That, that is correct. I, it's very important to me that when you see Geralt on screen that you know it's Geralt and that it's not some guy who could do the Geralt stuff and I'm just the acting piece in there. Um, for me, the character involves all of that. And um, yeah. yeah, we have we have a little clip. We have a clip. Uh, some of you may recognize. Let's run the clip. And I was on set uh, with a sword in my hand. Yeah. Um, it was just getting used to the weight of the sword. It was using it day in, day out. I had I think three swords where I lived. Uh, I had four at work. Wow. And it was just non-stop practice, 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 whatever. That's terrifying and creepy. Yes. <laughs> yes. I want to talk to the two lovely, yeah. fierce, amazing babies on this stage that aren't showrunners, the actresses, 
I'm going to start with you, Anya. Hi, girl. Hi. Um, you play the fierce Jennifer. You guys, come on now. Can you talk to us about the journey that she's on and what she's ultimately looking for? Tell us about our girl, Jennifer. Jennifer is on a journey of self-discovery. Yes. Um, I think what's great about our story is we look at not only her power, but her vulnerabilities, and together that makes her the ultimate survivor. Um, I, I'd, say her, I'd say her overall goal is to, to find true connection and, um, and an unconditional love, which she's never experienced. Yeah, she had a tough life. Y'all yeah. gonna see, she had a really tough life. Um, <laughs> she's been on the quest to discover her power also. Um, what does she sacrifice in order to find power and to, to find love, to get her power and find love? What do you think she had to let go of? Um, I, she, she had to, to let go of... Because um, there's a trade-off. Like, to, to yeah. get one thing, she has to give up something to get something, and you can't give anything away. There's something she gives up. Yeah, but, she, she presents such a harsh exterior, yeah. and that's something that she she needs to reflect upon and um, and tap into the vulnerability which actually makes her the most powerful mage out there. Right. Um, Arguably. I think that it's important for you guys to see this amazing woman in action and see, yes, y'all, it's like, just full of clicks today. We full of clicks, chock full of clicks. Um, as uh, Anya said, she vacillates between being strong and confident in her power. She's also very self-reflective and vulnerable, so I want you guys to see what she brings to this amazing, complex character. Can we see some Jennifer? <laughs> Friday Night Lights appears to be about football. Walking Dead appears to be about zombies. But they're actually about the heart of people, the connection they have, how they live their life, the love they build, the family they choose. And The Witcher is like that. So if there's anyone in here, I know we're at Comic-Con, so most of you are genre fans, but if there's anyone that's afraid to dip a toe in, because you think it, you might, I don't like fantasy. You're going to like this fantasy. I'll tell you right now. Did you see that amazing acting from Anya? Hi, hello? Hello? She has a transformation that I will not spoil for you, but it's a transformation. It's not just emotional, it's also physical. She's a beast. Mm -hmm. She's a beast, so I want to give you your flowers while I'm here with you. All right. Um, how was that? How was it filming that scene? How long did it take? Tell me a little bit about the scene we just saw in the clip. I, I remember, uh, first of all, I remember the location we shot at, and I remember saying, emailing Lauren at the time and saying, you know, this is the best day ever. <laughs> because I couldn't believe where I was and you know this part means so much to me and this scene is um, it's such a huge moment in, in Yennefer's journey um, and everything about that day was was epic, <laughs> epic. I mean I was freezing but it was epic. <laughs> also that's the it's first good. time I've seen this clip without um, a VFX slug across it that says, Make Baby Dead. Make Baby Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make Baby Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Months now it said, Make Baby Dead. Make baby so dead. it's really nice to see it with a dead baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Uh, dead babies work the way. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, Freya. Uh, hi, Pumpkin. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. Nervous. <laughs> Let her feel loved, you guys. She's a little oh. nervous. Let's give her You are amazing, you're beautiful, you're talented, and you're wonderful. And this is also your first major role. So what was this process like for you becoming a part of this amazing show? It was so exciting. I've always wanted to be in, you know, some fantasy epic. Um, well, you got that face, girl. You got a face for fantasy. You should just be an elf or a uh, queen. <laughs> um, so it was like a dream role for me. When I got the audition, I was just so excited. I was like, I have to get this one. Um, and it's weird to think this time last year I was, you know, studying for my exams, and now I'm a lead part in a. I mean, I hope you're still studying for exams. You're not out of school. She kind of, school's important too. Oh, yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, but, <laughs> not kidding. School's important. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's just been amazing working with such 
incredible actors, you know, every day. I've learned so much just absorbing constantly. Um, Jodie May is just phenomenal, Adam Levy, all of them. Just, it's been an incredible experience. Well, you are wonderful in it. And Siri starts the series as a very protected princess. She's got her own little cocoon that she's in. And then, you know, some things happen. How would you describe her journey this year without giving anything away? Too much away. Give it away. Um, well, as you said, she's had a very sheltered upbringing. Um, she's been very privileged. Um, and as a result of that, she's incredibly naive to what the real world is. And she's always been surrounded by people who have also been molded and shaped within this environment. And so she's never experienced a different perspective on on life. And so I think that's a huge part of um, her journey this season is putting herself in other people's shoes. Mm. And um, and she, she, it's clear from the start that she has this might and drive embedded in her. But she, she has to find a new kind of strength in order to overcome or at least look past the horrific things that she sees. And so it's it's a journey of uh, development um, and discovery, and she's, she's constantly in flux throughout the season. Well, you know what? I wish when I was your age I could have stood in front of this many people and been that poised and amazing. Right. My God, that was great! That was great! Okay, Lauren, so you have these, you have your Witcher, and then you have these amazing women. What did you want to add to the backstory of the women? Because the Witcher is the Witcher. And now you have these other women to flesh out this story. How did you go about bringing the woman's perspective into this? You know, I don't know that I would call it necessarily a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, in the books, uh, you meet all of the characters through Geralt's lens. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I wanted to do when I came to series is think about who these characters were before they met Geralt. Yeah. Um, so that they would be fully fleshed out characters that have their own journeys, and their own wants and needs and desires and complications yeah. that aren't just reflected through a uh, male lens. A male lens, yeah. Or Geralt, whoever, you know, it's, it is. Um, and what's so, what's so fascinating about it that both Anya and Frey have spoken about is that in the books there are all these hints of their amazing backstories and, and you get to see little tiny glimpses in flashbacks. We actually got to bring those... Uh -oh. There it is. Oh, it's back. oh I'm, I'm back. Uh, we got to bring those to life. And I think it's one of my favorite parts of the series is that uh, I would call it an addition to the books. Um, we really took the books and, and honored that source material, but we were able to give characters a little more breathing room and really get to know them before these, these three eventually meet up. Right, and another thing that's really great about the show when you see it, you guys, is everybody, everybody is fully formed. So, and the other thing I want to say, um, my alliance is shifted. Like one minute I'm rooting for this one, I'm like, this is the good guy. And then I'm like, well, I need the good guy. And then I'm picking someone else. So was it baked into the cake that maybe there isn't a hero or a villain? Like everybody's got a little bit of all of it in you? Yeah, what do you guys think? I think it's, it's like I was saying, it's all about different perspectives. And uh, for Siri, she meets a lot of different people along her journey. And and she's, she's having, I think she manages to see, Oh. Keep going, baby. I just won't come. Although they may, although they may have kind of completely opposing views to her, she's still managing to see the good in them. Yes. And so I think that's a really kind of prominent theme for my journey, anyway. Well, one of the great things about Siri's journey is that she's the character I think more than anyone that reveals the fullness of what this world is. She goes to a lot of places. So I want to show a little bit of Siri in action so you guys can see what she does. Let's do it. Hey, Henry. Yes. Hi. We, hi. Um, we can't talk about Geralt without talking about Roach. Tell us a little bit about your horse, Roach. Tell us about her. Roach, uh, Geralt isn't Geralt without Roach. Um, we meet Roach with Geralt at the beginning of this story. And as a lot of you know, Roach is more than just a horse. Uh, and more than a flying horse for some of you as well. <laughs> uh, but Roach is actually an essence of Geralt's, more like an anchor to Geralt's honest and true self. 
Because Roach is a name and a character which he gives to every single horse he's had. When we meet with Geralt, he's, um, he's 100 years old, and horses don't live that long. So <laughs> he's, he's gone through a few Roaches already, and the Roach that he's on is, she's everything to him. She's the one source of humanity left because the rest of the world hates him and hates everything that he does. And so, yeah, she's, she's his, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Lauren? There's no writer on this panel. I don't know what you're There's talking about. A, <laughs> she's, uh, she's the one access point he has to humanity. To put it, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to keep on waffling if I keep on talking, yeah. so. No, there was Next um, question. There's, I enjoy your waffling, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> there's a scene that we talked about, there's a scene in the, uh, in the first episode that I wrote um, where Geralt has a long soliloquy to Roach. Um, and very early on I would have friends read the script and they would be like, what is with the dude talking to the horse? Like, that should definitely go. Um, and I actually think, I mean, we've kept it, we've added to it. Um, no, Roach is really Geralt's anchor. And the one person, you know, Geralt doesn't show a lot of emotions, so it's the one person that he feels like, one person, one horse that he feels like he can be himself in front of. It's kind of like a therapy horse. <laughs> <laughs> and also, witchers tend to live very solitary lives, and um, they're not really supposed to make moral decisions. How is that line blurred for Geralt? How does he waffle when it comes to those decisions? Unfortunately, I mean, it's not that witches aren't supposed to make moral decisions. It's that witches, the myth is that they have no emotions. Because that, that serves them in making deals with people when it comes to negotiating for coin for a monster, for a contract. And if they're supposed to have no emotions, then they can negotiate as hard as they want. Right. And everyone's going to think, well, I can't pull the yeah, but my kids card because they won't care. Right. And it's clearly a lie when you meet Geralt. It's, Geralt is, is far more than that. And that's the special thing about Geralt. He has this dichotomy of being very hard on the exterior because that's how he believes the world is. Yeah. That's from his experience. That's the reality of the world. And so he reflects it. But in truth, deep, deep down, there's this man who is he has a belief in what the world can be. And so there are, there's, there's moral decisions he makes along the way, and um, all of them get him in trouble. <laughs> well, you know what you guys, how do you feel? I feel like we, we saw some clips, we talked to Henry and Anya and Freya and Lauren, I feel like we did everything we could do here on the Witcher panel. Don't you guys feel like we got it all in? Yeah? yeah. How do you feel? Well, y'all just greedy. But wait. What, 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 what is that, Henry? What did you say? There's more. There's more? <laughs> I, I didn't hear that, guys. Did you want to see more? Do you want to see more? started with nine writers in a room um, in, here in Los Angeles. We've been in London for post-production, which is going on right now. Um, I keep getting texts telling me to watch things today. Uh, we shot in Budapest. We went to Vienna. We went to the Canary Islands. We went to Poland, where this book series is from. Um, we carried a crew of about 300 people wow. with us most of the time. Um, and this vision is thanks to them. Um, it can be in my brain, it can be in their hearts, but none of it actually shows up on the screen unless a lot of people are doing their jobs really well. Um, a special shout out to Andrew Laws, our production designer. Um, everything is as beautiful as it is because of, of him. Uh, very early on, what I ask the writers to do when they write episodes is um, to keep basically Pinterest boards, you know, like mood boards for their individual episodes. Um, and we would upload those and Andrew would take those off. And so from our, like, pouring over internet uh, and Google searches, uh, we got that, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Yes. Yes. You guys know crew is ensemble in show life, right? 
They get there before everybody, they leave after everybody, they get paid less, they have less amount of time when they go home to get back. They literally deserve a bigger round of applause on what y'all deserve. became a part of the show. Sorry. Can you tell us how you became a part? Like, what was the audition process for you? And Yeah, I actually didn't know of The Witcher novels before um, before auditioning, which was great because I went into that process like, and I, I had no idea. Um, uh, I, I had three auditions, um, and loved every single one of them, and definitely wanted the job more every single time I auditioned. Um, after I did get the role, I, um, you know, I, I immersed myself in the books and, and the games and um, every, everything I could get my hands on um, because, yeah. yeah, I had it. <laughs> Can you say a little bit about the physical transformation that you went through because I was watching and I couldn't figure out, I, I, is it, Prosthetics is it something that would help us figure it out? Well, uh, without giving away any, you know, all the magic, but yeah, I have. Yeah, tell us, but don't give anything away. Yeah, tell us, but don't give anything away. What can I give away? <laughs> you, you can talk about. Okay. You can talk about. Well, especially your. I mean, let me just say, Anya's being really, really um, uh, sweet about her audition process. She worked her ass off um, and met with us. Uh, and my favorite part was that we had written fake uh, casting sides so that no one could see the actual scenes we were doing, and one of them involved uh, Denver eating an apple. And... Yeah. Right. Not back in. Yes. Hi, guys. Uh, Andy came in, um, and throughout the scene, was getting angrier and angrier. She took a huge bite of apple and spit it all over the casting room floor. Um, and then finished the scene and was like, thank you, I'm so sorry, and picked all the chewed up pieces of apple up. Like, no, it's okay. Uh, it was very sweet. Yeah, that was my casting process. Yeah, I don't remember the question. Oh, that's it. That, well, the, well, how she... How she oh, the, the transformation, yes. Um, that was such a gift of, for an, any actor. Jennifer is a gift for any actor, but to, to transform, um, to, to have, with the help of prosthetics, to transform your whole body and play a 14 year old and go on the journey, you know, to when we meet Jennifer in the books um, was, was amazing. And I, did, I wish I had more time to work on the movement of that. I left a job and went straight into, into The Witch, so I wish I had that, but actually, um, I, I was on set a lot, so I got, you know, more, it became second nature for me to just tap into that, that movement. I've got to say, I can't imagine how much better it could have been because I thought there were two actresses playing the role. I said, well, they, got, they look alike, but they're not. The bodies were so different. It's amazing. Um, I want to say thank you so much, you guys, for letting me be a part of introducing this amazing show to these people. You guys are talented, amazing. The show you created is wonderful. And you guys, this is the, the best news I can give you today. Um, when The Witcher is released, it's coming soon, it's going to be streaming. So you can go right from one episode to the next episode to the next episode. To the next episode. And as a genre fan, you know that little seven days when you come out to come home from the spirit. So, thank you. Um, what? what? Y'all got to wait for something. Now, wait a minute. We're going to wait for something. Long suffering is dead. We got to wait for something. Thank you so much, you guys. We're going to take a moment and go and take some pictures. Give another applause for this wonderful day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once again for Netflix's The Witcher.